Good morning. The Senate Finance Committee will come to order. order. Okay. Huh. Good. We have a we're good. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. This is the only committee for the um, special session. Um, uh, thank you to our four members that appeared in person. I do appreciate it. Uh, there is coffee and donuts for everybody, so please help yourself. We have a very serious um, agenda before us, and it's great to see people in person. Welcome back, Mr. Nauman, Mr. Bottern. Thank you very much. And we do have a new member of the committee, and that's Caitlin Bemis, my new assistant, uh, legislative assistant. So welcome to the committee, Caitlin. Uh, we do have a hard stop at 1 o'clock. We have session, and we have some bills before us that have been agreed upon. Um, we are going to start with Senator Rood's legacy bill, and that is uh, Senate File 21. Welcome to the committee, Senator Rood. So we will, what we'll do is um, basically just go through the highlights, some of the changes. You've been, of course, before the committee, so we know your bill, but any of the changes that have uh, appeared because of the compromise with the House. And um, like I said, highlights, change items. Um, I do want to recognize Mr. Knopf. If he is going to be here today, he's retiring. And um, cannot well, thank, thank him enough him. for his service all these years. Okay. It was Mr. Nauman. It was Mr. Nauman that's got the echo. Okay. <laughs> we are set. A little clunky here this morning, members, but uh, we're off. So, Senator Rude, Ru welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, committee members. <laughs> um, we uh, think we've put together an amazing um, legacy uh, bill this year. Uh, most of the bill you have, have seen, um, as you know, it passed off the Senate floor unanimously, 66 to nothing. And we have made very few changes in the bill. The Senate position is still held strong. The Outdoor Heritage Fund, uh, the numbers have not changed. It spends $128 million. Um, it's all the recommendations from the Lasart Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council, as they have recommended. There are no house policy provisions accepted in that piece. Um, the Parks and Trails is $110 million. That is uh, also the Parks and Trails Council's recommendations with no house policy uh, or changes accepted. Um, the first uh, exceptions we have, uh, the Clean Water Fund still spends $256 million. Um, it is still the House or the Senate version. We have funded the Soil and Water Conservation Districts to the, uh, $24 million. Um, there's $5.6 million for CREP. The original Senate bill had 15, uh, but we did keep that amount in. Um, in negotiations and 15.9 million for PFAs. And there's no house policy left in the bill. Um, for the arts and cultural heritage, we spend 149 million. Um, we um, uh, stuck to the constitutional um, requirement of 47% to the state arts board. Um, we did increase uh, the community identity program pool uh, for more um, participation. Um, and there's a, a few other changes um, that we negotiated with the House, the projects that they uh, wanted to do, such as the Litchfield um, Opera Center and a little more money for swimming lessons, as you've seen what's, what's happening in our state lately. And so those are a few of the, of the changes. But basically, um, it's very similar to the Senate bill that passed uh, during session. Thank you, Senator Rood. And then I think we'll turn to Mr. Mueller and the spreadsheet, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I believe uh, I'll ask Ms. Uh, Dallas to share the spreadsheet I think he has on his screen. And I'll go through that quickly. Um, Senator Rood highlighted a lot of the changes. So I won't, I'll just mention a few other items of maybe new items that the Senate hasn't seen or, you know, that we accepted from the House. Um, the first page of the spreadsheet, again, is the Outdoor Heritage Fund. And as uh, Senator Rood said, this was um, 
exactly the same as the Senate bill went out and exactly the same as the Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council recommended. So it was about $128.3 million and they left about a little over $9 million sort of on the bottom line um, that will carry over in the next year. Again, the Outdoor Heritage Fund is the one fund where we only fund one year and they'll come back next year with a, uh, they're actually working right now on uh, next year's recommendations. So they'll probably come back with another recommendation for probably roughly the same amount or maybe more, probably over $130 million recommendation that they'll come with next year. Um, again, the, the one project, the only difference going in, the house had $3 million extra dollars that they wanted to spend on uh, Conservation Partners Legacy and the Senate did not agree with that, so it's the Senate bill for the Outdoor Heritage Fund. Next on page two starts the Clean Water Fund. Um, again, this is largely based on the Clean Water Council recommendations was sort of the starting point. And the Senate and the House had a few exceptions um, from those recommendations, um, but largely kept to that, and mostly more on the Senate side. Um, Department of Agriculture, on line 83, the total is $20.2 million. The agreement here is the, exactly the same as what the Clean Water Council recommended. And there's no new projects. All these projects has, have been funded previously. Next, we have the Pollution Control Agency. And that starts on line 85 and goes on to the next page. There's two, new, there's two little carve-outs here. Uh, a River Watch program and Red River Watershed Management Board. These were, uh, the Red River Management Board came from the House and the River Watch program was a Senate. So there's two little carve out programs within PCA that I wanna mention. Um, the House had a project on line 103 for if, that people may have heard about. It's uh, testing for nanoplastics and microplastics mm -hmm. and that was not accepted, but that was also not a Clean Water Council recommendation. Um, so the amount for total for PCA is $42.1 million. Next we're on to Department of Natural Resources. Um, again, the Senate funding it largely at the Senate recommendation, uh, $17.4 million. There's a few items that we were below the Clean Water Council recommendations. Uh, the Clean Water Council wanted to spend 900,000 on fish contamination and we're at 350. And um, another one was, for, and but basically everything else was pretty close to the Clean Water Council recommendation. Next we're at uh, Board of Water and Soil Resources. This, they are, they are by far the largest recipient of money from the Clean Water Fund because they distribute most of this money in grants. So the the Bowser, as we call it, is a total of $141.8 million, which is about 55% of the clean water appropriations go through Bowser. A couple items I'll point out is the Senate going into the conference committee uh, was fully funding CREP, the, the, the final phase of the CREP. And Senate, the Senate on line 128 actually had about $15.5 million for CREP and this would have fully funded and finished the program. Um, the extra amount that the Senate had in the bill was the amount that the governor was requesting through the bonding bill. In the end, we ended up with $5.6 million for CREP, which is still above what the Clean Water Council was recommending and what the House had coming in. So there's still about $10 million left to fund uh, in CREP to finish that program. But the, the this 5.6 gets us closer to that goal. Um, there's a couple new programs in this area that this, the house was, that came from the Clean Water Council, the, the Watershed Partner Legacy Grants Program on line 131 for a million dollars. And then on the next page, page four, um, there's a new wetland restoration easement program on line 132. This was recommended by the Clean Water Council at $10 million is sort of a comparable to maybe CREP but a different program. So we funded this at also at about $5.6 million. And as Senator Rood said, 
Um, we fully funded the, the $12 million per year for the soil and water conservation districts that have been funded previously in clean water um, or in legacy uh, bills. Next round down to the Department of Health and we're funding it at the same level that was recommended by the council, 11.9 million. The only changes here is that this, the agreement was to roll uh, the private well water supply program line 144 into the source water protection program uh, line item. So there's no longer a separate appropriation for pri private well water protection that is now part of the source water protection program. But otherwise the total funding stays the same. For Met Council, the final agreement, a little over $3 million was the same as the Clean Water Council recommendation and University of Minnesota. There is one new program here I'll, I'll point out on line 158 that was not part of the um, Clean Water Council recommendation but came from the House. It's a, a new proposal for testing for chronic wasting disease in water. Um, so this was a proposal from the University of Minnesota that, that was funded. So those are the highlights I'll point out um, of new items that maybe the Senate hasn't seen before in the Clean Water Bill. Next page five, uh, we start the Parks and Trails Fund. There's not much here to add to what Senator Rood uh, mentioned. This is continues the 40-40-20 split and the numbers uh, and distribution is the exact same as what came from the Senate bill. Next we have the Arts and Cult Cultural Heritage Fund. It's still on page five here. It starts on line 194. Again, the State Arts Board on line 199, that's a little over $70 million and that is 47% of the total appropriation. Um, next we get the Historical Society. Um, the two little new programs here that were sort of a carve out came uh, from the house bill that Senator Rood mentioned, the Litchfield Opera House and the Armour Company Gate House um, for $50,000. So these are two programs that were funded separately in the house that were accepted. Next, uh, Department of Education, the, we traditionally fund the regional public libraries out of this and this $5 million. And then there's two new programs, the Water Safety Grant Program for 220 and the Minnesota Center for the Book for 200,000 was part of the Department of Education request. Next page six of the spreadsheet, Department of Administration. This is where we fund the Minnesota Public Radio, um, Public Television, things like that, and the Como Zoo Science Museum. So a lot of these little separate programs go through the Department of Administration. Um, most of these were funded at the Senate level, all the way through the Line 223 Science Museum at $1.4 million. Um, the new program on line 224, Appetite for Change. This was a house proposal. And then there's a couple new items that were in the Senate bill, the Veterans Memorial Matching Grants for on line 227. Disabled Veterans Rest Camp on line 228 for, for 128,000. And then uh, the TAP on line 229, this is a, a support program for uh, dis people with disabilities on $30,000 and the Kasan, Kasan uh, WPA restoration for $30,000. Next we have the Minnesota Zoo on line 233. Um, that amount is $3.9 million total, close to what the Senate had and a little a little bit less what the Senate had coming in and above what the House had going in. Um, next, I'll go to Humanities Center. Um, the regular grant programs, Humanities Grant Programs, 2.5 million. There's a Children's Museum Grant Program for 1.85 million. Um, so the, on line 240 is the Community Identity and Heritage Grants. This was a, a area where there was a big difference between the House and the Senate going in. The House had $7.25 million for the community identity grants, but then named how that would be distributed. The Senate going in had $4 million and didn't name who was, the recipients would be. So we ended up at $5 million and largely the 
the language that the Senate had going in and not naming dollar amounts for specific groups. Uh, next page, a couple last items. I will note here the Indian Affairs Council on line 263. The amount, $4 million, was the same as what was in the House side. And the Department of Ag County Fair Grants, um, the Senate had $800,000, and that's what the agreement was. And that is it. So a total of $149.7 million for the Arts and Culture Heritage Fund. So the total for the bill, which isn't on the spreadsheet, but with the four funds is $645.6 million total for the four funds. And that is it for the spreadsheet. Thank you, Mr. Mueller. Are there any questions on the spreadsheet? Senator Rood, looks like uh, you and your counterpart did a very good job with the bill. Uh, Mr. Stanley and Mr. Knopf, any questions? Mr. Stanley. Madam Chair, members, good morning. Um, there's not a lot of policy in the legacy bill. I can point out uh, items that you might not have seen, but unless there are questions or unless you want me to do that, I don't necessarily need to, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. I think we're good and familiar with the bill as it is, so I don't think any of the policies changed. But are there any questions for Mr. Stanley or Mr. Knopf? Okay. Um, before we wrap this up, though, and I know, Mr. Knopf, you were not in the room when I um, said goodbye to you, or when, when we're, as a Senate Finance Committee, we want to say thank you for your service to the state and to the Environment Committee. Worked with you for a very, very long time, and you have just been a champ. And I hope you enjoy this new phase in your life. It sounds exciting, actually. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> so um, I, I, we couldn't, uh, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Knopf, do you have any words that you'd like to say? Put you on the spot? It's so good to see you. Oh, Actually, you. see you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Touch you. Uh, Mr. Knopf. Um, Madam Chair, members, um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been thir 38 years. Wow. Um, and it's, it's hard to believe it's been that long, but I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed working here. Um, I think working for the Senate is just a great place to work. Um, I was very fortunate to have a great career here, um, especially since I started working for the Senate when I was 28 and I had a full head of hair. Um, and, uh, so um, uh, 38 years here, 28, including being a baby, not here. So more, more, more of my years of my life have been here with the Senate. So, uh, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, well, we really appreciate you. Did not know that you were retiring. Senator Root or anyone else would like, if, if you'd like to say something too on this? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I don't think that the legacy would be, um, this is our right hand um, man in, in, in committee when whenever we get stuck on, on language or something that needs to happen, the, um, the historical knowledge that we lose when we uh, lose Mr. Knopf will be um, immense. Um, and, and working on the legacy, I don't think that this legacy bill would be as strong and as great. The structural changes that have been suggested and that have been worked on have made this a, a, a truly a, a legacy project that I think when the voters see how we have spent the money and the wise decisions that we have made, uh, it will be something that will be renewed in the Constitution. And that's because of the nonpartisan staff and our staff, Matt, um, and all the work that they have done um, to make to make the in Environment Committee what it is. And so I, I can't thank them enough um, for all that they do. And you'll be greatly missed. <laughs> for sure. Thank you, Senator. Senator Franson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just want to uh, reiterate what's been said and thank Mr. Knopf. Uh, I've worked on one issue that was very um, important to not just my district, but families in my district with uh, the death of Sophia Beckler when she was seven years old out of carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mr. Knopf helped pass Sophia's law. And um, it's making an impact in everybody's lives in, in a state with so many boats and we're talking about um, the incidents happening in our waterways and uh, I just want to thank you for your expertise. We, we had a national award as Minnesota was the first 
state in the nation to pass a requirement to have carbon monoxide um, poison detectors in, in boats of certain sizes of cabins. So I just can't thank you enough for your guide, guidance and um, leadership there because it, it happened because of you. So thank you. Well, Mr. Knopf, job well done. Well, we greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Okay, members, we are going to take a vote. Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move that Senate File 21 be recommended to pass and be referred to general orders. On Senator Kiffmeyer's motion. Members, audio on, video on. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? Motion prevails. Bill does pass. Thank you, Senator Rude. Nice Thank you, you, Madam Chair and members. Thank you to um, Mr. Knopf, Mr. Stanley, and Mr. Mueller. Thank you. Up next, we have um, the Ag Bill, Senator Westrom. And again, Good morning, again, Madam we Chair. get we'll get uh, settled here. Um, Senator Westrom, you are available, correct? I am. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? I do hear you. And Perfect. I think for you and for our st for the nonpartisan staff, uh, again, we are just going to do the highlights and the changes from when this bill passed out of uh, finance. So we'll just, just briefly go, go through. through. Uh, okay. We'll briefly go through through the change items and the highlights. And uh, I know there is one uh, technical amendment, the A1 amendment, that we'll deal with later. So, Senator Westrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, uh, to echo uh, the comments uh, about Mr. Knopf, who's also been uh, our uh, cornerstone and support for the Ag Committee. I, uh, want to wish him well in his retirement, but uh, also uh, reiterate how important and how valuable he's been to our Ag Committee and working with him over the years. So, uh, it's just been a real pleasure and uh, very, very uh, sad to see him retire. Uh, he didn't even get my permission, Madam Chair. So, <laughs> but uh, Greg, uh, Greg has done a, a great job and uh, got big shoes to fill, so, uh, but I know we've got staff that can do it. Um, uh, Hannah Grunwald is uh, our newer fis new fiscal agent, or fiscal uh, staff on, on the committee, and I'll have her walk through this. Uh, Madam Chair, just, just to touch on a few highlights, and then I'll let her go through it. Uh, I just threw away my three pages of notes that I was going to review the bill with yeah. you, so I'll, I'll shorten it up for you. Um, but um, Madam Chair, members, a uh, couple of the key highlights in this bill. Uh, we're focusing on uh, biofuel infrastructure uh, for more E15 or greater uh, blended pumps across the state uh, to help promote uh, the biofuel that we uh, make and grow right here in Minnesota. Uh, that changed from when we left. We had a, a smaller number, uh, but we've been able to raise that uh, bio incentive account. We've also raised from uh, uh, what was about four million before uh, over the biennium to about nine million. Uh, and um, Madam Chair, we've also put a big emphasis on meat processing, which some of that was in the, the bill when it passed, but uh, we've we've uh, added some, some uh, uh, dollars, but more so uh, got the house to agree with uh, some of the language we've had to focus on the meat, meat processing. Um, we've added, uh, urban ag uh, allowance out of the agri fund for uh, uh, some urban ag projects also uh, added some uh, allowance out of the agri fund for emerging farmers and helping uh, uh, farmers that are starting out uh, that would be immigrants uh, to uh, with translation services and the cottage food industry which we uh, uh, made some improvements and changes in the policy bill we passed last month uh, th these translation dollars would also help those in the cottage food industries. Uh, many of the many uh, of the licensees uh, are also recent immigrants, and so uh, that translation, uh, uh, those translation resources can be used 
uh, to help those uh, trying to advance their cottage food industry license. And so, um, Madam Chair, we have a $10 million uh, target that's uh, up from the one we left the, the finance committee and the areas I just highlighted are the, the, some of the bigger areas we put some of the new dollars in. So uh, with that, I just uh, have Hannah Groundwell walk through the, the highlighted uh, spreadsheet and uh, stand for any questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Westrom. Uh, Ms. Grunwald, uh, welcome to the committee. And if uh, you could start with the general fund target and go from there, that'd be great. And again, we're just gonna hit the change items and the highlights of, of the fiscal sheet. Sounds great. Madam Chair and members, uh, for the record, my name is Hannah Grunwald. I'm the fiscal analyst with the Agriculture Committee. And um, I do have a change only spreadsheet that I can share with the committee. I'm not sure if Mr. Fisher has that on his computer, otherwise I can share my screen. We're getting that right now. Okay. I'll, I'll just begin by mentioning that the target, uh, the global agreement target for the agriculture and rural development uh, budget area is 10 million increase over base for the fiscal year 22-23 biennium and then uh, 10 million in the tails as well. And like Senator Westrom said, a, a, a huge focus of, of the negotiations was around um, biofuel infrastructure um, and, and biofuel incentive payments. Um, and I'll go into a few more details of, of, of what was changed from the original Senate bill um, once we have that spreadsheet shared. There we go. Great. All right, so um, just starting with the first page, um, most of the changes within the ag budget happened in the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Um, there are four different areas there, so I'll just briefly touch on each area. Um, under protection services, the uh, original Senate bill had some tweaks to the rapid response and incident management team appropriations. Both of those are now fully funded in this bill. And um, the, there's also uh, industrial hemp development program is funded. Um, this was being funded under a different appropriation in the Senate bill, now it's um, a standalone appropriation. The capital equipment replacement is um, receiving more funding uh, than the House original uh, provision. The House was having this funded through fees. So now without having um, fees included in the bill, this is being funded more than the House provision had it at. Um, Another change would be not just weed invasive plant program um, is being fully uh, fully funded at the 2019 bill level. Um, there's a Senate bill had it at base. This is um, bringing it back up to that 2019 level. Then there's also an operating adjustment in this area, um, as you see on line 18. And you'll see in each uh, area that there's operating adjustments throughout the uh, department. And, and this was the, originated in the House. So I'll move down to promotion and marketing. And um, some, some changes here from the Senate bill, there's a, a new house provision on international trade for 50,000 in um, this year 22. This is lower than the house's original um, position. And this is to um, expand opportunities um, in, in international trade for farmers and value added processors including an in-market um, rep representative in Taiwan. Then another change here would be the operating adjustment on line 31, um, the farm safety grants and mental health outreach were both in the Senate bill uh, originally. So I'll move on to the second page. Here um, underneath the value added products section, a lot of the changes within the bill happen within the um, Agricultural Growth Research and Innovation Program, also called AGRI. Uh, in the original Senate bill, there were a lot of carve outs here. And uh, it was negotiated to kind of increase funding in other carve out areas, such as the biofuel infrastructure, uh, which is that 6 million out of the AGRI uh, fund over the biennium. And this is more than the Senate's position, uh, original position. And also the bioincentive payments here got more funding than um, either the House or Senate position. So there are a few um, 
kind of prioritizing some carve out and, and, and um, compromising on taking a few out. Um, and as you'll see, the AGRI program was increased on line um, 47 by about 1.2 million in the first biennium. And, um, and, uh, and, and I'll touch on the um, allowable spending that Senator Westrom mentioned, such as urban egg. Um, that table shows up a little bit later in the spreadsheet. And I'll move on to administration and financial assistance part of the department. Um, here in Farm Advocates, uh, both House and Senate have provisions on, on um, increasing funding for farm advocates throughout the biennium and, and tails. And what was compromised was to bring the House position on farm transition um, into farm advocates uh, and funding farm transitions for 150 over the fiscal year 22-23 biennium and 100,000 uh, in the tails. And here also what was agreed to was to have um, 50,000 dedicated to uh, the FarmLink um, web application. And the, uh, the Senate uh, kept their second harvest heartland uh, position from uh, the original Senate bill, increasing funding there to 100,000 um, over the biennium and into the tails. Uh, another new provision from the House side would be the Egg Best Management Practices Loan Program, increasing funding here, about 2.9 million in uh, the fiscal year 22-23 biennium, and about uh, 2.9 million in the tails as well. I'll also point out the Healthy Eating Grants on line 62 was a Senate position to remove this from um, this funding, it would be at 650,000 in the fiscal year 22, 23 biennium and ongoing into the tails. And the other changes that are listed here um, were in both uh, positions of the House and Senate. So I'll move on to the next page. And if uh, Mr. Fisher could just scroll down a little bit. Thank you very so much. Ms. Greenwald, excuse yeah. me, um, and members, apparently, Ms. Greenwald, you're working off a change item list, which we do not have. So our apologies on that. We are we just have the the full spreadsheet. Uh, so there oh, is no searching. My apologies. I um the, the larger spreadsheet is a little bit uh, more flipping pages. So I figured the change item might be a little bit easier to walk through. Um, and if anybody has any questions as I continue through, feel free to jump in. I'll point out um, here on line 69, uh, the Senate was able to keep its position on um, meat cutting at uh, Central Lakes College, 150,000 in the first year. And this requires um, some matching dollars for um, the, the college to, or for the department to find um, matching dollars to fully fund this. And uh, a house position on some line 71 is the farm outreach uh, and translation services. And Senator Westroom touched on this in his opening remarks. And this is a funding of 300,000 in the, over the biennium. And that's an ongoing into the tails as well. And um, the only other change item within the department would be um, a match program. Uh, for the meat inspection program. And this uh, is a non-general fund change. And this was in the House and Senate versions of the bill. So that kind of um, covers the department changes and main compromises there. I'll, I'll move on to the Board of Animal Health. And uh, here, the only change from the previous Senate position would be an operating adjustment uh, which originated in the House and, and Governor's budget, I believe. And then the next agency would be um, Agricultural Utilization Research Institute. And here there's a few changes. Um, the Senate agreed to have a meat scientist added here for 300,000 over the biennium and into the tails. And then the meat cutting mobile unit, which was originally in the Senate position in the department, was moved to have Ari as a fiscal agent, um, funded at 500,000 the first year. Then with the Office of Broadband, um, there are no changes 
from the base funding for the office, which is 700,000, um, which was in both the Senate and House positions. And um, there's no, there were border to border broadband grants within um, both House and Senate positions. But as you all know, the uh, global agreement uh, of the 70 million for broadband uh, is, is not in this, in this bill. And then I'll just point out briefly on line 113, um, there's a carry forward of the cancellation amounts in fiscal year 21, um, which brings the, the total of the A budget to 137 million 946,000 over the biennium, which represents the 10 million increase over base. Now I'll just um, quickly touch on the last page uh, going back to talking about the agri program within the Department of Agriculture, a few changes here um, within the allowable spending. The spending we discussed earlier were the um, designated spending that the department is um, uh, directed to spend. And this spending listed here is um, allowable spending of up to um, this much money can be spent on these programs. Um, so for example, the urban and youth agriculture um, allowable spending on line 126 was increased uh, by 600,000 over the biennium and into the tails. And the Senate negotiated to have um, the house emerging farmer provision moved to this uh, area under urban ag. And that would be a $20,000 um, uh, transfer to the emerging farmer account um, over the biennium and ongoing. And the farm to school allowable spending was increased by 800,000 um, over the biennium and into the tails. And the good food access program was also increased by 300,000 over the biennium and ongoing. And also touch on the, the Senate um, agreed to fully fund the uh, agri program and administration costs at 6.5% of, of the appropriation. So that covers um, just briefly some of the changes and, and agreed to um, negotiations that were made within the uh, budget. And if anybody has any further questions, I can um, stand for those. Thank you, Ms. Grunewald. Members, any questions? The spreadsheet, uh, Senator Franson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a clarification, and I, I think I know why it's not on the spreadsheet, but you, we do fund, the Office of Broadband in this spreadsheet, but I know there's been a lot of discussion about broadband money coming from the federal government. Can you at least um, give us a nice idea where we're going to see those funds, if it's going to be in some in, in a different division's budget or bonding bill? Um, do we have a sense of where that's going to be uh, located? Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, Chair. Members. Oh. oh, go ahead, Senator. Excuse me. Hold on one second, please. Senator Westrom, hold on. Uh, Mr. Nelman. Madam Chair and Senator Franz, and it, I think there's still some negotiation going on on that. My expectation at this point would be in the Capital Investment Act or bill, but um, I'm not entirely certain at this stage. Senator Weston. Madam Chair, that's what I was going to uh, say as well. The 70 million of broadband that we agreed upon, uh, the last I know it looks like it would be in the bonding bill uh, carried there. Uh, but. Madam Chair, maybe you know more than uh, than we do right now, but Senator Franson, that's what we that's what I know as well. Yep, that's exactly right. Further questions for Ms. Grunwald, and I know we have the commissioner here too, so very very fortunate to have the commissioner here. But let's um, go with either uh, Mr. Knopf. Mr. Knopf, do you have anything to say on the on? No. no. Okay, great. He's just here to answer any questions. Uh, Commissioner Peterson, welcome. And Senator Kent, I'm sorry. Let's see. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Hopefully, hopefully this works because I haven't done this before in here. <laughs> um, the question I have is um, has to do with the healthy eating grant on Line 62, which is the market bucks, and um, I believe I heard stated that. Um, uh, that it was the Senate position to cut this. I'm wondering if we can get some explanation as to why that is the case. Uh, thank you, Senator Madam, Kant. Madam Chair. That, um, yes, Senator Westrom. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, that uh, 
program uh, as we look through it. It's a, a, a started recently in our uh, budget area, uh, Senator Kent, um, with other priorities uh, between the Senate uh, originally as the bill went out and then with the House. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just not, uh, not a program that had as widespread a support or a push. Um, and as we looked into it, uh, many of the Senate Conference Committee members and the Ag Committee as, as a whole, when we initially looked at it, uh, saw th this program This program essentially allows to, to, to double dip um, for anybody on SNAP. And uh, the whole overall view was there's, there's other priorities or areas that uh, are also competing for funding and uh, SNAP is covered um, by those that receive the food shelf or food, food uh, stamps or food assistance. And they are able to still go to the farmer's market. This would give them an extra uh, bonus dollars to spend uh, on top of the uh, monthly allotment they'd already received. And so uh, that's, that was uh, a concern as, as it was initially going through the Senate and uh, as we negotiated for it uh, or around it, uh, there were other priorities that the House wanted uh, more than, than that. And uh, the Senate uh, didn't, didn't adopt the program in the first place as it uh, felt there was other things that were more uh, needed and uh, uh, to, to, to give two, two, uh, two, two, uh, lines of, of uh, assistance for the people that qualified in the first place uh, for it uh, felt like a, a better there, there, there'd be better uh, programs or they should just increase the snap dollars initially if that's uh, what what they're trying to achieve but it was kind of a backdoor way of of uh, double dipping if you will so, so madam chair that's that's how it landed as we negotiated it was on the table at times but the house was unwilling to uh, to fight for it uh, for for other provisions, and uh, we didn't get everything that we were pursuing, and 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 they didn't get everything they pursued, but they got other provisions that we've covered that that were were higher priorities for them. Thank you, Senator Westrom. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I don't know if Senator Westrom remembers a few years ago when he asked me on the floor about farms in my community, thinking I didn't have any, but I do. Um, <laughs> and I have heard from farmers, uh, not just in my community, but from around the state, who really think this is a valuable program. And, um, uh, you know, this is a case of people uh, working with their local farmers and uh, supporting local farmers. And um, so I I, I don't understand how this is double dipping. Um, I don't understand uh, this is feeding people um, and making feeding people a priority. And so I'm very disappointed um, and you know look forward to understanding more uh, why we don't why the Senate doesn't see this as a priority. Madam Chair, Senator Kipmer, I think I have some information that will be helpful here. Thank you. So this program has previously been included in the state government budget. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> uh, we always felt it should be an egg, uh, but um, it, it landed there and that was fine. Uh, but it was moved over uh, to the egg area um, after the last budget cycle. Uh, but as usual, it's new to them, not new to us. And so um, we did not have it, either of us, in our state government um, budgets this year. However, it has come to our attention, Representative Nelson and I have agreed that we would include it, provided we can find the money within our target, which I think we can do. And so um, right now, I think it is landing in state government and I'll work with Chair Nelson to find that within the target. That's $325,000 right now, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, Senator Kipper, I'm not sure if that's completely, but that's it's part of the negotiation. So we'll continue this conversation. Okay. But it, if it, it was to be agreed upon, that would end up in your bill for sure. No. 
Okay, Madam Chair, that is just the latest information that I have. But I also told Chair Nelson that was not an absolute yet because we didn't have some of those things worked out. But the main thing is, is that um, I had agreed to help out or do anything I could, but um, we will wait for that then. Thank you. Thank well, you Madam Chair Senator Kemp. Um, and Senator Kiffmeyer, I just want to thank you for uh, being open to this and trying to reach a solution that will help feed people and help our local farmers, because I think this is the time to do that. And uh, anything we can do to be helpful to as we move this forward, I, I encourage everyone to try to figure out a way to make this work. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kemp. Senator Western. So, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Kent, a uh, bigger, bigger number that is in this bill uh, that helps local farmers is the farm to food, uh, 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 farm to f farm to school program, uh, which are uh, many of the same or all the same farmers uh, that that are raising uh, local crops. Uh, there's uh, Hannah. Can you remind me, uh, refresh me on the increase? But I think it's eight hundred thousand uh, dollars of increased allowance for those programs. So, Hannah. You want to confirm that so I'm speaking with the right. Yes, number. it is. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, 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 Senator Kent, I want to share that with you. So, as we we go through final budgets, th these are these are these are the same farmers that are, uh, in many cases, uh, raising crops, and we've increased that eight hundred thousand uh, dollars. So, Senator Kent, uh, again, uh, there were scenarios where it was part of negotiations. The House did not. Uh, see it as a higher higher priority than some of the other things they uh, were pursuing, uh, or the things that they didn't want the Senate to to uh, to have, and so uh, it was fully negotiated. Uh, there were scenarios where the House and Senate would have agreed upon it, but uh, the the House wouldn't agree to some of those situations uh, uh, as they had higher priorities uh, that they wanted to fund it. But uh, we did agree to the the farm to school, we both uh, found ways to make that work. Uh, so Senator Kent, I want to give you that uh, note because there there was more money uh, in in these areas with local uh, um, local farmers and local farm products being sold. Um, and again, the SNAP dollars can be used at the farmer's market. It's just, it's just this program was a secondary, a second program to 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 uh, give them even additional dollars than they qualified for when they applied, and uh, that that's uh, that's covered in the farm to school as is a is a big big increase in this bill. Thank you, Senator Westrom. Don't see any further questions, Commissioner. <laughs> Very good to see you. How are the crops down your way? <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, again, uh, Tom Peterson, Commissioner of Agriculture, and uh, if I could, um, you know, Minnesota is in a really severe uh, uh, drought situation and it's heading uh, worse. We had counties and uh, get into what's called a D2 drought. Our drought monitor comes out every Thursday and it's, you know, not looking very good at this point. We need timely rains or we're going to have... Uh, uh, some emergencies on our hands. So unfortunately, not very good. <laughs> and so, uh, um, and that really speaks to the budget uh, that we put forward uh, uh, here uh, in the budget that you're considering today. And one of the key things that we had in that is maintaining our uh, emergency services uh, as we looked at putting a budget together, as you know, from your area and everything we had to deal with last year in COVID, um, how important our staff that served those emergencies were. And so we really appreciate being able to have strong funding uh, to allow us to react uh, in those situations. And so, you know, sometimes I feel like we can't catch a break, you know, because it was just, you know, as wet in 2019, 2020, we had COVID. And this year where prices are good for farmers, we're uh, staring down uh, a drought situation so fingers crossed and we'll see how that uh, plays out um, as i said in in our budget we really had priorities going in um, besides the protection and rapid response it was really uh, addressing the shortfalls in covid where the meat and livestock processing which this bill does on several fronts it doesn't just attack it one way we're looking at you know uh, Pete. commissioner uh, somehow we lost um our broadcasting here. <laughs> Would you mind just hold on one second? Working out some 
kinks. <laughs> So members, I think we'll go ahead. Uh, apparently we're gonna work on getting this up, but commissioner, if you'd like to continue. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And uh, um, you know, and so the meat and livestock processing, just a really big issue for our farmers as we had, um, you know, we had a backlog before we even went into COVID. And what I'm excited about in this bill is we're addressing it on several fronts through grants, through training at colleges, working with AURI and having a meets uh, uh, piece there. Um, that's what's really exciting in this bill to me. And the biofuels infrastructure uh, in moving forward and making Minnesota uh, a leader in E15, uh, which we are and will continue to be with what's in here. Um, the other piece that I just want to highlight too, as Senator uh, Westrom said is, um, you know, our work that we've been doing on trying to get more farmers, emerging farmers in, and people always ask me, what's an emerging farmer? You know, we have people um, from all different communities in Minnesota that want to get into farming and um, including veterans, you know, it can be veterans, it can be Hmong farmers, Somali farmers, um, uh, just new people that are getting into farming. And we're just doing a lot of good work there that helps all of the state. Um, and then, of course, as he mentioned, the increases for urban agriculture and uh, farm to school. So there really is a lot of different things in here, as well as including addressing our farm safety and our farm uh, rural mental health with both sides of the aisle have been very helpful in working on and keeping. And so I just want to thank you for this. The one uh, disappointment or hard thing in this bill was the market books and um, I do want to address one thing on that, and I do appreciate the discussion and the consideration on that because that money doesn't just go to feed people that can use the dollars. It also goes to the farmers uh, at the farmers markets. Um, my understanding is too, that if we do not address this or put money into that, we, we will lose a sizable federal match uh, to that too of several hundred thousand dollars. And we need to have that done um, by July uh, July 1st. And so if any consideration can be done or we can work that out, it will leverage hundreds of thousands of dollars, not just for those who need it, but also our farmers. So thank you. And I'm excited to put this, uh, this bill uh, to work for Minnesota and our farmers. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and thank you for number one, uh, being here in person. It really does make a difference and for your diligence this entire year. You have been working very hard. Members, are there any questions for our commissioners? Uh, Senator Franson. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioner. Thank you for being here. And just to elaborate a little bit of what you just mentioned about uh, market bucks, what is the federal match? Is it a, a certain cap? I just wanna understand because I know we have different numbers floating around and I certainly wanna leverage any matching dollars that we send over to the federal government every year as Minnesota taxpayers. So um, what can you give us a little bit more detail on that matching um, proposal? Yep, uh, Madam Chair and yes, uh, uh, Senator, Sir, uh, Sir France. And it is good to be here in person, by the way, too. Yeah. It's still a little overwhelming, actually. But uh, um, my understanding, and again, this program doesn't go through our department. It goes through uh, the way it's been worded. It went through the Humanities Center and then to uh, hunger solutions and I believe then they're the grantee on the federal grant that would match this I believe of 320 whatever the matches of 325,000 and so that that's my understanding of what's on the table um, and that that grant would be in jeopardy without some kind of match so that's my understanding thank you commissioner Reb was just asking mr. Nauman about the federal match and um, and uh, we and it and if Sorry, Madam Chair. And yes. if there is more information, we can work on getting that uh, to the committee or the appropriate people and work on that with the partners on that. Mr. Nauman. So Madam Chair and Commissioner, um, I apologize. I was on the other side of the room when this conversation happened. Um, if there is more information about the federal loss um, to Mr. the Nauman. state, Madam Chair, um, I'd be interested in seeing you speak up a little bit. I apologize, I'm out of practice. I was just looking for a little bit more information from the commissioner and the department about the specific loss to the state that would be helpful. Okay. Thank we you. Will, we'll sure. take care of that. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Any further questions for the commissioner? 
See any? Thank you very much, Commissioner. Good luck, and uh, everybody, let's pray for some rain. Yes, please. <laughs> we need some rain. Um, as Senator Kiff, do we have one minute? Oh, Senator Marty. Um, Chair, I guess I have a, a question for um, Senator Westrom, and it's not something that is in the bill or anything, but it was something that was being discussed in the policy bill and was a leave on the table, at least for a while here. The reason I was asking was I saw an article in the strip this morning about um, contaminated ethanol plant in Nebraska that uses, it says they claim they use 98% of the treated seeds, waste treated seeds and the big problem with it. And I know the, issue the house was pushing for expanding the ban on use of treated seed for feed food or oil to include uh, ethanol feedstock and i was just curious what i realize there's not policy in this bill i'm wondering what prospects are next year or whatever for this provision senator western uh, madam chair uh, the, none of that language we were ever able to come to agreement on uh, there were there was that was in the policy provisions, which uh, most many many of them uh, most of them passed in the last uh, policy bill we we passed that we could find agreement on. Uh, we had continued to discuss that. Um, uh, there was there was just never a uh, a point where there was language that that was uh, workable uh, for. So many of the farm groups uh, concerned about it. Uh, however, uh, Senator Marty, um, the ethanol industry uh, that I've talked with, uh, seed dealers, uh, they're not aware, and uh, nor do they believe uh, it would even be allowed to burn treated seed under the PCA permits they already currently have in the ethanol plants. So uh, uh, there wasn't there wasn't um, uh, any anyone that believes that you'd you'd have treated seed that could be burnt in the state of Minnesota, so it, it it's already precluded uh, as as a practical matter and as a current uh, practice and as current laws or permits require. So uh, there were other things uh, that, that added into that, and uh, we just uh, while while there were offers that that would have traded. Um, agreeable language uh, was never accepted uh, between the two parties. Uh, the, the House wouldn't accept Senate counter language. And uh, and um, so it makes makes it a bigger issue. Uh, why, why some of those provisions we couldn't get a good acceptable language uh, on uh, gave me and the ag groups many, many concerns about is what else? What else was in there? What was trying to be attempted? Uh, but it's it's not a practice that that's allowed in Minnesota right now, uh, as well. And um, uh, included in that provision from the House uh, had had labeling requirements uh, that would make Minnesota an island for for the seed farm seed that that would be sold here. And uh, uh, it was one of those issues that the ag groups, many of them, came forward. With, with great concerns. So we, we, there's there's nothing in this bill that changes current practice. Senator Murray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Westrom, I, I understand. I just would make the point that uh, the fact that this one plant in Nebraska, which is now been shut down, was says, and they may be false with their claim, they claim they were taking 98% of the waste seed from around the country, which would include Minnesotans. Um, so I, I do hope that next year we can take a serious look at this. Um, and want to just say one final thing, Madam Chair, about the bill. Again, I think several others have already made the point about the healthy eating grants. And I, when I hear we're using federal funds as well, I do hope that in Senator Kipfires or whatever bill, we can find a way to address that. Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Marty. Senator Westrom. Uh, uh, Sen Senator um, Marty, I guess now. Oh, uh, the, the the Nebraska plant just just also 
from everything we found out, and, and the, I believe you, you probably heard the same thing. The, the the issue wasn't so much the burning of it; it was the disposal or spreading of the uh, remains or the remnants or the DDGs that were left behind in Nebraska, uh, as well, Senator Marty. So, uh, had they handled the the spreading out uh, over more acres or a pro a, a, a different uh, disposal, uh, that that was the big issue uh, that came about uh, in Nebraska from what we were told uh, and the information we, we had received. And so that's, it was the DDGs, the, the, the remains that had higher levels of pesticide treatment uh, that, that should have been spread out over more acres or other, other ways uh, remedy that disposal that that was the real crux of the issue so just just wanted to share that additional insight uh, for you and committee members because that's that's what it all the information pointed to as we looked to it uh wasn't the process of the burning it was the what was left over uh, mostly that was the the issue so but anyways thanks for your comments questions sorry keep back uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would move the A1 amendment to Senate File 20 at 5. Senator Kiffmeyer moves the A1 amendment. Um, Senator Kiffmeyer, as we know, this is just a technical amendment. Yes. yes, it is. And if staff want to just briefly explain it, uh, it's a changing a statutory citation from the uh, from a point 18 to a point 20, same uh, section chapter of law. And then none of the one, there's a deleting of a phrase, technical assistance and. Thank you, uh, Senator Kiffmeyer. Ms. Grunwald. Madam Chair and members, the, um, as Senator Kiffmeyer uh, explained, the A1 amendment um, adds in a statute uh, reference on page eight, line 24. And this is adding um, a citing production incentive to the bio incentive language for allowable spending. And then the other technical change would be on page nine, line 16, which takes out technical assistance from um, the biofuel infrastructure language, uh, making this sentence uh, now read, a grant award must not exceed 65% of the cost of the appropriate technology. And that uh, those are the changes in the A1. Thank you, Ms. Grunwald. Members, any question on the A1 amendment? Okay, Senator Kiffmeyer renews her motion on the A1 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay? Amendment is adopted. Okay, we're just, we're just clarifying with the commissioner that the uh, description on market bucks is good, that it is um, a match to a nonprofit. Is that correct? Okay, Hunger Solutions, great. We want to just make sure that's on the record. Any further questions, comments? Senator Westrom. Senator Westrom, final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the discussion, uh, the focus that we've been able to achieve for farmers, for uh, consumers, uh, meat, the meat pr processing and meat cutting that uh, was a big priority in the Senate this year. Uh, we've augmented with the mobile meat unit, uh, the meat cutting position at AURI to help develop that research and uh, eventually uh, come up with uh, more meat cutting uh, careers in Minnesota, but uh, make that available for the consumers, but also the farmers that raise the livestock because uh, that's been a real bottleneck uh, for, so for farmers, this is a big, positive push. Uh, many of them, uh, smaller farmers that uh, like to process their own meats directly sell to their customers, uh, very similar to uh, what we've discussed with the farm to food and other uh, local farmers uh, that Senator Kent uh, talks about as well. Uh, and so I wanna highlight those uh, accomplishments in this bill, the biofuels uh, to distribute and uh, make available infrastructure to uh, sell more of that homegrown energy uh, raised by our corn farmers uh, in Minnesota. In most cases, uh, this is a big emphasis as well, the bio incentives to develop that 
continue developing that new biofuel, new incentives, new uh, uh, energy sources out of uh, Minnesota ag or Minnesota uh, products. And so um, that's that that's uh, going to be very helpful and strong in, in, in this bill and uh, ultimately uh, developing new markets, whether it's emerging farmers, cottage food industry, or other uh, types of new new markets through biofuels and uh, uh, meat meat processing uh, that helps all farmers across the state of Minnesota. And uh, we know how important it is to feed our state and we know how important it is to feed the world and uh, the opportunities that this bill will bring forward uh, will be positive for Minnesota farmers. Uh, we wish we could bring more rain with it, um, but we, we, we will have to wait, wait for mother nature to, uh, to bring that and uh, madam chair your idea of praying for that is a good a, a good request for all of us to uh, uh, keep keep in our prayers and uh, keep uh, keep keep uh, fighting for our farmers to uh, get that much needed rain that's uh, soon soon uh, getting to be a dire consequence if if it doesn't come so with that madam chair uh, happy to uh, have the committee pass this bill out and uh, send it to the floor Thank you, Senator Westrom. Very good. Senator Kiffner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move Senate File 25 as amended to be recommended to pass and referred to general orders. On that motion. Audio aye. and video on, please. On that motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion prevails. The bill is off to general orders. Thank you very much, Senator Westrom. Thank you, Madam Chair and Committee. And then members, we are gonna continue on with uh, Commerce and Energy. So who would like to start first? Senator Dames, I would assume. And then Senator Senjum. And again, uh, for all those involved in this testimony, please uh, keep to the highlights and to any of the change items. Uh, of course, the bill has been before this committee, so we know the different version. We're just more interested in what was compromised. And to the uh, nonpartisan staff, if you could start with uh, the general fund spending and go from there. Welcome, Senator Dame, Senator Sengem. Good to see you, you both. Well, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Finance Committee. Today we have Senate File 19, which is the Combined Commerce, Consumer Protection, and Energy Omnibus Bill. Uh, and Madam Chair, were you going to have uh, the fiscal uh, summary? Do you going to have that? Do you want to have that gone through? Yes, I absolutely would. So we can turn to Mr. Mum if you'd like to, right now. Yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members. Um, for the record, I'm Casey Mum, fiscal analyst, uh, staffing both the Commerce and Energy Committees. Um, I will share my screen if that is okay and uh, use that to walk through the spreadsheet. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mum. Um, okay, so uh, First, um, I'd note that the target for the bill was uh, $16 million in fiscal year 22 and 23 and $8 million in fiscal 24 and 25. That was recently increased uh, to $16.838 million in the first biennium and $8.566 million in the second. Um, that increase was to accommodate the uh, insurance fraud specialist salary increases uh, as part of the um, law enforcement salary package. Um, so uh, the first uh, couple changes that I wanted to point out, well, I'll, I'll preface this by saying uh, the bills going into conference committee were very different. Um, the Senate's position um, largely used its target to pay for a two-year extension of the state's reinsurance program. Um, and the House bill uh, did not have any uh, single item that was very uh, large, but there were just numerous um, environmental and consumer protection initiatives uh, that summed up to uh, their target. Um, so uh, a lot of the changes that I will point out were not in the Senate bill and came from uh, the House's position. 
Um, so the first two are on lines 15 and 19. These are revenue items that uh, are being um, uh, tracked uh, and they're associated with uh, the licensure um, changes uh, where uh, debt buyers are uh, uh, subject to licensure. And as part of the house's student loan borrower bill of rights package, um, uh, any student loan servicer uh, in the state now requires uh, licensure and there's revenue associated with that. So um, beyond that, uh, the only revenue changes are on lines 24 through 39. And these are all associated with um, the Public Utilities Commission and the Department of Commerce uh, Energy and Telecommunications Division's Assessment Authority. Um, there are certain appropriations um, and spending that those divisions and the PUC make that can be recovered through uh, their annual assessment on um, regulated industries and utilities. Um, so those amounts are shown on lines 24 through 39, and they each have a corresponding spending amount uh, that I will point out uh, in the spreadsheet as well. Mr. Um, Yes, Mr. Mum, can you, we are working off the the full spreadsheet, and I know you're working off an abbreviated, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Nauman, could you just please go through, and and uh, we don't have the spreadsheet that you're working off of. Madam Chair, I think for members' uh, use, the paper copy that they have corresponds to the columns that Mr. Mum is using. However, you want the far two right groupings of of columns. I think those correspond to what Mr. Mom is using. That's correct. And, and Madam Chair, I'll, I'll point out that I am uh, working off of the full spreadsheet. I'm only showing um, the last two columns just uh, so that the screen size can be a little larger and it's a little easier to read. But uh, if at any point anyone would like to look at um, the governor's bill uh, position or the House and Senate bills, those are included here. I'm just, um, uh, they're just not being displayed uh, on the screen right now. Um, so uh, moving down into the spending items, um, the, they begin on line 58. Uh, line 58 through 60 are um, uh, operating budget adjustments for the department's uh, securities unit. And um, fit line 58 is uh, simply reflecting um, that the securities uh, unit has been relocated um, into the Department of Financial Institutions Division. Um, and so there's a corresponding reduction on line uh, um, uh, uh, 99. Um, uh, so this is not a net increase. Um, on line 61 is uh, spending associated with the student loan borrower bill of rights provision. Um, this would be to implement and enforce the provisions of that um, initiative. Um, on lines 67 through 69 are operating adjustments for the department's administrative services division, which includes um, funding for the um, department's unclaimed property program. On line uh, 81 is an operating adjustment for the telecommunications division. This is one of the appropriations that is recoverable through assessment. So this increase of $69,000 in the first biennium and $86,000 in the tails is also tracked as revenue uh, because it is recovered through the department's assessment of uh, telecom providers. Um, on line 82 is a one-time appropriation to the Legislative Coordinating Commission uh, for equipment to support um, the legislator, legislature's um, closed captioning coverage. Um, there's been a, a big increase in the amount of closed captioning coverage uh, over the last um, year or two, and uh, this equipment uh, was requested to support that work. Um, on line 87, there is an all, there's also an ongoing uh, uh, increase um, for the amount that's transferred to the LCC for closed captioning coverage uh, from the Telecommunications Access Minnesota Fund. Um, and that's a $33,000 a year increase over the base funding for that purpose. 
Um, moving on to lines 97 through 99, these are um, uh, operating adjustments for the uh, uh, enforcement division. Um, in, in, that includes line 99, the uh, relocation of the securities unit. So um, I, I pointed out earlier on line 58 that um, this uh, uh, funding is just moved to another division uh, as part of the department's uh, reorganization. Um, on line 100 is a $200,000 one-time appropriation for a catalytic converter theft prevention initiative. Um, there is also an appropriation on line 106 of the same amount from the auto theft prevention account uh, in the special revenue fund. Um, and on line 109 is a one-time transfer from the consumer education account into the general fund. Um, this is to pay for a grant to the Minnesota Council of Economic Education. Um, that uh, spending uh, is shown later, and I'll, I'll point that out when we get to it. Um, on lines 117 through 121, there are several operating adjustments for the department's insurance division. Um, these are all amounts to um, uh, assist with the, the core um, operations of the division, um, including um, a one-time increase of uh, $504,000 um, for fiscal 22 and 23. Um, and that's shown on line 121. Otherwise, uh, all of these uh, increases are ongoing spending. Um, and also on line 123 is uh, an operating adjustment. Um, on line 126 is a, an appropriation for um, uh, an initiative that uh, originated with uh, a bill of Senator Benson's that would require um, any legislation mandating um, Health benefit, additional health benefits to be evaluated uh, for uh, potential costs. And um, that's an appropriation of uh, $105,000 per year. Uh, those were the costs identified uh, in the fiscal note. There are also appropriations um, on uh, uh, to um, MMB and the Department of Health for the same purpose that are shown later in the spreadsheet. Um, on line 139 is uh, an adjustment to the department's weights and measures division. Um, this is an increase of $3 million per biennium. Um, this was uh, a provision that was not in either of the House or Senate bills, but it was a governor's uh, budget recommendation. Um, and the conference or the working group um, agreed to uh, carry that funding. Um, on line 147 is uh, an operating adjustment for the department's energy resources division. Um, it's, uh, there's an also an, an adjustment on line 149. And these are also both amounts that can be recovered through the de uh, department's assessment authority. Um, on lines on line 153 is a one million or a, a one-time appropriation of eight million dollars for the solar on schools um, uh, program. Uh, this was a provision that was carried with different versions in both the House and Senate bills, and this is general fund spending so that it uh, will be spent outside of the uh, Excel service area. Um, and so there is a corresponding amount from the renewable development account that I will point out later um, as well. Uh, similarly, on line 154 is uh, an, appro an appropriation for the solar on community colleges pilot. Uh, it's structured very similarly to the solar on schools program, but is exclusive to um, uh, colleges and universities. Uh, that's $1.242 million in fiscal 22. And then the base for fiscal 24 is established at 1.138 million. On line 156 is an ongoing appropriation uh, for implementing the Natural Gas Innovation Act. Uh, these were costs identified uh, in a fiscal note and um, the appropriation is also recoverable through the department's assessment authority. 
Um, on line 165 is um, the extension of uh, some assessment authority that the that's currently in statute, um, uh, allowing the department to collect $500,000 a year uh, for utility grid reliability efforts. Um, the agreement was to extend that assessment authority for two years. So um, the revenue and associated spending are shown on lines 165 and 169 um, in fiscal 22 and 23 only. Um, and relatedly, there is uh, uh, an expenditure and a revenue shown on line 166 and 170 as part of the Minnesota Efficient Technology Accelerator Initiative or, or META. Um, moving on to line 176, um, the bill repeals the sunset of the um, Petroleum Tank Release uh, Compensation Fund or Petro Fund, um, which was uh, set, um, scheduled to sunset after fiscal year 22. So um, everything after fiscal 22, um, uh, the spending is um, uh, an increase over the base. And lastly, uh, for um, the Department of Commerce General Fund, um, on line 179 is a $100,000 one-time appropriation um, to defease the bonds for the Anoka Ramsey closed landfill. Uh, and this would allow uh, the implementation of, or the construction of some solar arrays on the landfill. Uh, this was a uh, a provision that was not carried in either the House or Senate bills, but it uh, was an initiative um, uh, of Senator Pratt's um, that uh, was uh, discussed by the working group. Um, on lines 183 and 184 are the um, uh, insurance fraud specialist salary increases that are being carried in the bill. Um, this includes $283,000 a year of ongoing funding and a one-time appropriation in fiscal year 21 of $272,000. Um, on lines 189 and 197 are the amounts that I mentioned earlier uh, related to the health benefit um, uh, legislation review. Um, these are ongoing funding amounts to the Department of Health and Minnesota Management and Budget to aid the Department of Commerce in their review. Um, on, lines, uh, on line 202 is an operating adjustment for the Public Utilities Commission. Um, this is uh, an increase that is uh, recoverable through the Commission's assessment authority over uh, of the utilities it regulates. And um, on line 203 is an appropriation that is also recoverable through assessment um, for the Natural Gas Innovation Act implementation. Um, on line 216 is um, ongoing funding for the Department of Employment and Economic Development uh, to establish the uh, Energy Transition Office, um, which would um, assist communities uh, that are um, eyeing a, uh, a, a plant closure in the future and help them transition from that. Um, so that, that's ongoing funding of $350,000 per year with a one-time uh, startup cost of $170,000 in fiscal 22. On line 221 is the grant uh, to the Minnesota Council of Economic Education. Um, this is offset by a transfer from the consumer education account um, that I uh, mentioned earlier of $300,000. Um, that is it for general fund changes. Um, there are uh, um, several uh, appropriations from the Petro Fund that are shown here um, related to the repeal of the sunset uh, uh, that I mentioned earlier. So those are shown on line 245 through 257. And then the last uh, section of the spreadsheet that I'll go through is the renewable development account spending. This is all contained in article two of the bill. Um, and the, the net effect is that uh, it's uh, article two spends about $37 million above the base. Um, in fiscal 22 and 23, and uh, about $12.7 million in the tails. 
um, which uh, results in a balance, uh, an estimated balance in the renewable development account of um, about $40 million um, in fiscal 22, and then it increases to 48, 67, and 89. Um, so that's on line 272. Um, the first uh, appropriations uh, are on lines 283 and 284. Uh, these are one-time appropriations to the Department of Employment and Economic Development um, for an energy, clean energy training center in North Minneapolis and uh, for a grant to the city of Mountain Iron for a solar manufacturing plant uh, expansion. Um, on line 297, there's an appropriation of the Department of Commerce for a study of a small scale weather um, uh, 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 and it, it's got a focus on agriculture, the impacts on agriculture. Um, on line 298 is a uh, initiative that uh, is um, with the uh, University of St. Thomas um, that uh, has some ongoing funding implications. Um, uh, there's uh, $3.6 million in fiscal 22 and 23 and $1.4 million in the tails. And there's also a $400,000 base amount established for fiscal year 26, which is uh, beyond the scope of the spreadsheet, but there's a note there to notate that. Um, on line 299 is uh, the um, appropriation for the solar on uh, colleges and universities. Um, this is the same amount that uh, was appropriated from the general fund and the base for fiscal year 24 is established in, in the same amount as the general fund appropriation as well. Um, moving down to line 324, um, the bill extends the solar rewards program that is uh, run by Excel Energy and uh, to finance that, um, the bill allows Excel to withhold uh, $10 million in fiscal year 24 and 25 um, from what they would otherwise deposit into the renewable development account. So this is, uh, this is shown on the spreadsheet as a revenue reduction, um, but the purpose is to pay for uh, two additional years of the solar rewards program. Uh, relatedly, um, there is a $8 million uh, amount for the solar on schools program, um, and this would be for schools within the Excel service area, um, and it is financed in a similar way by allowing Excel Energy to withhold $8 million from their deposit into the renewable development account. Um, on line 334 is a one-time $10 million appropriation to the University of Minnesota for an ammonia uh, research and demonstration project. And um, on line 341 is a $5 million one-time appropriation uh, to capitalize a new uh, energy conservation revolving loan fund. Um, that will be run by the Department of Administration. And so on line 342, there are um, operating uh, appropriations uh, to the Department of Administration for that purpose. Um, and on line 343 is uh, a one-time appropriation of $125,000 for uh, a study of, uh, to study the environmental impacts of uh, certain construction materials. Um, that is it for uh, changes uh, in the bill. Um, so I will stop sharing the screen and uh, am available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Mum. Um, actually, I would like to turn to Senator Senjum. If you had any thoughts, um, we didn't give, give you a chance to do a little intro. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, the uh, you know, it's an honor to be before you today talking uh, with respect to the Senate Energy uh, portion of this particular bill. Uh, and uh, we worked, uh, I think, uh, relatively hard over the course of the, you know, the last four or five months 
putting together a, a bill which uh, incrementally uh, moves Minnesota forward uh, towards a clean energy future. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, portions of certainly the bill have been recited here by my best or mom. And by the way, lest I go any further, uh, certainly thank you to him, to uh, uh, Ms. Fontaine, uh, our Senate Council, and certainly Darren Lee and Allie Gunstrom, who sit over here, who've been just invaluable in terms of making the last uh, four or five months happen, and in particular working with me on this bill. So I want to certainly acknowledge that. Uh, just, uh, Madam Chair, we could just maybe go over some of the new new items within the bill, and, and to some respect, this has been reflected uh, by by Mr. Mum. But there's three hundred ten thousand uh, dollars of general fund money that has gone for closed captioning, as it uh, has uh, uh, occurred over the course of this uh, new session. Now we've got many more committees. Uh, we have meeting rooms, which uh, and, and uh, systems which. Uh, don't accommodate the ability to close catch them, caption rather for, for any of the hearings. And so this will buy more equipment, uh, $8 million of solar on schools in uh, of general fund money in, in non-RDA areas. And thank you, Madam Chair, for that. Uh, we did have the 8 million of RDA money for, uh, for the XL service territory, but we needed that. And uh, I do appreciate the fact that you were willing to go to bat with me on, on that one and make that happen. Uh, a new idea, so to speak, uh, we had we had all kinds of solar requests for like everywhere, uh, but we didn't have one for uh, uh, solars on uh, in school colleges and universities. And it just seemed to me, and this came up uh, during actually the, the floor hearing, uh, one of the DFL uh, members uh, offered this as an amendment at the time. And I, I did think it was a good idea. It wasn't time to take it at that point. But, uh, but we, in fact, we've started a new program, uh, I, I would believe, to... Uh, uh, not unlike solars on high schools, grade schools, and so on, will uh, will uh, graduate, if you will, into a, a solar program for colleges and universities, at least within the, the Minnesota state system. Uh, so we've got uh, a Senator Pratt bill in here that has to do with, uh, and this used to be at least for some time was, I believe, in the environmental bill, maybe in the ag. Uh, Senator Pratt, I can't remember, but uh, you brought it over to us, and there's hundred thousand dollars of. Uh, of general fund money for bond repayments. Uh, uh, a particular uh, utility in Minnesota wants to put solar on uh, on a closed landfill that we have cleaned up with state bonding money. We need to we needed to clean up uh, that, if you will, uh, buy that buy that bond money off, so to speak, to you know sort of clear things for this to happen. And uh, utility will reimburse uh, through lease payments back to the state of Minnesota for that hundred thousand dollars. So so all that's going to work pretty nicely. I won't go into the old material, uh, at least the, the material that this committee has heard from before. We added a half a million dollars within the framework of the uh, of the uh, of the group, so to speak, uh, the uh, the work group uh, to the Mountain Iron Project, uh, Senator Thomasoni. We've got uh, we've added uh, again the St. Thomas Microgrid program. Uh, it's 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 really a pretty impressive operation over there and. Uh, and they're going to expand that. We've got about $5.4 million there. We've got $583 million, the University of Minnesota Extension Service to cover, to cover uh, uh, supercomputer time on uh, some climate studies relative to uh, uh, climate at, at actually at the three square mile increment in Minnesota. And uh, I wondered about this for a while, but I, I certainly I think if this thing really works and uh, of course, we all know the power of supercomputers and medicine and things like that. This might be uh, uh, very, very helpful for our farm community. I actually think uh, as we think about uh, decisions on flood control and bonding that uh, we may get some benefit off this. And so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we've got a provision here. It's a study actually uh, called Buy Clean, Buy Fair. It's uh, taking a look at uh, at uh, various building projects and uh, from the standpoint of their carbon emissions and uh, and studying the feasibility of whether or not and this doesn't do it. It studies the feasibility of, of whether or not uh, we might uh, include uh, going forward uh, in some future bill, the idea of uh, making decisions about uh, bidding projects and products related to what's in those bids from the standpoint of their carbon emissions. So I think that's it, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Mom did note the uh, balance going forward on the, uh, on the RDA accounts. So I won't mention that. Uh, I would uh, turn it, I think, back to Senator uh, Dames to cover some of the uh, 
commerce portions, and I can come back to some of the remaining energy policy items. Thank you, Senator Sencham. Senator Deans. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And first, I'd like to thank uh, Casey and Chris for all their work with us this year uh, on, on doing all the things in, in the committee atmosphere, but also with the working group and OWN and uh, John, our researcher, and our CA for all the work they've done. I'll just touch on some of the changes that have been made since uh, the bill left the floor. A couple of things, the weights and measures, uh, we had not funded any funds on that, additional funds either in the House or the Senate bill. Uh, we did uh, re fill up the governor's request. We did fund that fully uh, out of the general fund allocation we had, which was uh, $16 million for the first biennium and then an $8 million entail. So we were able to do that. Another thing that uh, we did add is a catalytic converter pilot project. Uh, this was a project that was added in the working group and that has uh, 400,000, 200 of that's coming out of the general fund, 200 of that comes out of the insurance uh, automobile theft fund. And then uh, as we go on other changes that were made in the bill, um, the article three, the insurance stuff, there was a change made there. Everything was heard in the Senate other than the prescription anti-kickback definition modification, we did accept that. And then uh, uh, Article 4 we had in the current bill, Article 5, uh, there was some new uh, agency uh, debt buyers uh, wanted to be licensed. And so we did agree to do that. So that's new there. And Article 6, there was some things that were added in there, the student uh, loan borrower bill of rights the volunteer driver modification provisions. We accepted those. I spoke earlier on the catalytic converters, toxic toys, and then the self-storage unit modification. That was, uh, uh, everybody could get together on that. All of the players on that came to an agreement. So we did uh, put that in there. Uh, also, as we go through, um, the also the change was the law enforcement salaries adjustment. We did include that and that did, did change our, uh, uh, we were originally at $16 million target and that did change that uh, to include that. So that's pretty much the changes that have been made since it was in front of finance last time. Uh, I do feel we come up with a very good bill. Uh, we were able to get some things in there that we wanted and some things we did want, we weren't able to get, but that's part of compromise. And that's part of what makes a good bill. I think when we left the table, uh, nobody was real excited, but nobody's real unhappy. And usually that's a good sign. So with that said, uh, Madam Chair, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Senator Dames. You did mention the law enforcement changes and that we do have an amendment for that, that Senator Kiffmeyer will offer after we have an explanation from Mr. Nauman. So Madam Chair and members, I believe this is the A1 amendment prepared by Mr. Mung. Uh, is that in the packets or? Yep. It's in the packets. So Madam okay, Chair, I would clarify this as a fiscal housekeeping matter. Um, this is simply makes the uh, law enforcement salary increases, both the, the increase that was appropriated in fiscal 21 as well as the supplement available until December 30th, 2022. Recognizing that we're close to the end of the fiscal year, that money could cancel if, um, if we got to the end of the fiscal year before the agency had a chance to implement. So this, this deals with that point. You will see this in the other bills that deal with the law enforcement um, because uh, increases as well. It will, I think, be incorporated in the bills at that point. This bill was tidied up before uh, we had a chance to identify a particular issue. So that's the reason for it. Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think you sort of answered my overall question and that is the underlying provision in the bill. So the stuff that the law enforcement increases that we passed in a separate bill earlier are going to be dished out each of the finance bills so the insurance fraud ones here and dnr ones in that bill um mr Nauman. madam chair senator marty yes i glossed over that i think you will see components of this in obviously in this bill you'll see it in the transportation bill you'll see it in the environment and omnibus bill and the judiciary and public safety bill will also carry provisions of it it was a preference from the House. 
to do it this way. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying yep. I was curious how it was handled. Right. And so each of them will either have an amendment like this for the current biennium extended or they'll be incorporated in the bill already. Mr. Nauman. Madam Chair, Senator Marty, that's my anticipation. Yes, I believe that the subsequent ones will have time to incorporate this particular language in each of the appropriations. Okay. Further questions? Okay. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move the A1 amendment to Senate File 19. Senator Kiffmeyer moves the A1 amendment on that motion. Members, audio on, video on. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay, amendment is adopted. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Dames and Senator Senjum. Is there any, oh, we have, um, we have further, um, we have the commissioner, Arnold, on Zoom here. I know she's um, active with uh, some other negotiations too. So Commissioner Arnold, there you are. Welcome to Hi. the committee. I'm so glad you uh, had, you made some time for us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, and, and I'll be brief because I know you have a lot to get through. I just wanted to extend my thanks to uh, Chair Dames and Chair Sanjum for the bill that we have today. Um, as they went through, you know, it's a really strong package of proposals. It's going to have some good consumer protections. It's going to create jobs and bolster Minnesota's clean energy economy. But I think probably most um, parochially, maybe I'm most excited about the budget provisions for our, <laughs> for our department. These are really going to fill, fill needs. And, you know, otherwise without them, we would have been looking at service cuts to industry and consumers. Uh, finally, I'd like to uh, thank Chair Dames um, and others for their support on the NAIC credit or the NAIC package of bills in particular, the um, data security bill, that one is going to really provide um, a framework for having um, secure information at, at our insurance companies and having plans and, and having the companies working those plans. It'll also allow uh, health and, or uh, sorry, <laughs> mixing up all of our things. Um, life insurers to continue to sell certain annuity products, which will be really important for Minnesota Minnesotans. Um, retirement planning and uh, the Reserve Credit Model Act, which is um, perhaps one of the more nuanced of these, but that's going to allow our, our domestic insurers access to um, non-domestic or uh, our U.S.-based insurers access to um, non-U.S.-based companies as they look to mitigate their catastrophic risks. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone, and in particular the staff. I know how hard these uh, things are to pull together, and um, so uh, I, I appreciate um, all of the staff who worked on this as well. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Is there any questions for the Commissioner? Senator Franson? Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioner and Senator Dames. I also just want to echo the thanks on the commerce side as the lead in, in, the, in the committee. I appreciate the changes that were made. I think it's a pretty strong bill. Um, as Commissioner uh, just mentioned, she uh, the, the, the committee, um, the commerce side is usually small and mighty, but uh, these are important additions to their budget to include and, and be sure that we have a robust consumer protections and, and, and industry in our state. So I want to thank you for making the changes and I would I'd love to have a spot in the bill, but it looks like it's full. So thank you so much for, <laughs> for and I recognize that many of these bills are all men. So there's a few women senators that you can ask to be added to these bills uh, as they reach the floor. Thank you. <laughs> thank just, you, Senator. Madam Francis. Chair, just response yes, to Senator that. Dames. It was the working group committee, so that's how it ended up being that way. <laughs> that's great. There was no selectivity. Any further questions, Senator Marty? Did you have a question? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, and I'm not sure if this is for Senator Senjum or for Mr. Mom, but um, two of the projects that would be funded by the RDA are funded, but they're funded by withholding funding from the RDA and then Excel doing of the Made in Minnesota extension of solar and schools in the Excel territory. I guess I'm curious, why, why are we doing it that way instead of appropriating it? Because normally it's okay, we'll appropriate 10 million for extension of aid in Minnesota and so on. Why are we doing it where we're saying, okay, don't put 10 million into RDA and put it directly into the aid in Minnesota extension, the solar and schools? 
Is there a reason for that? Is there a change? Senator Marty, are, are you, are you, Senator if I for her to understand you, are you asking why we have a, an RDA funded for greater Minnesota schools, so to speak? And uh, oh, okay, yes, tell me a little bit more then. Madam Chair, Senator Senator Senator, no, not that, but of the 8 million for solar in schools that would normally, that's in XL territory, would right. be funded by RDA. Mr. Mung explained in the spreadsheet, seems to show that you're saying, no, we're not going to, Excel is not going to deposit that money in RDA. They're going to put it in solar and schools. Is there a reason for making that change? The same thing with the 10 million for extension of made in Minnesota. Instead of putting it into the RDA and spending RDA funding on it, we're saying, don't put it in there, we'll spend it directly. I don't know that it makes a difference. I guess I'm curious because I haven't seen it before. Senator Marty, my understanding is, and, and, and I think I'm going to have to, to, to draw to a Casey Mum lifeline here, but my understanding was that that is the, if you're talking about uh, Excel, just not putting an ERD, but just, I think, I think that has been custom, but help me, Mr. Mum, if that's not the case. Mr. Mum? Yeah. Yes. Uh... Mr. Mum, you are muted. I, I apologize for that, Madam Chair. Um, no Madam Chair and Senator Marty, um, with solar rewards, um, that is how it has been funded uh, for quite some time. And I think uh, it, it being this just being an extension of that, um, it, uh, it just makes sense to continue that practice. Um, and with the solar on schools amount, um, I know that that was uh, uh, some language that was requested by Excel Energy. Um, fiscally, uh, it has the same impact on the balance of the renewable development account, whether it's withheld from deposit or first deposited and then reappropriated to the utility. Um, but uh, that that's my best uh, understanding of um, why that is the mechanism that's being used. Ms. Fontaine, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, I, I, um, I, I think Casey responded well. Again, this was the solar on schools was kind of a request from Excel. I guess I would point out that the solar on state, co state um, colleges and universities is not being withheld. That is going to be appropriated from RDA. So, um, I, it was really up to the working group and kind of just ended up um, that way. But it, it is a little bit of both uh, to Senator Marty's questions. Sometimes money is appropriated from the RDA to Excel. Other times, if it's already in statute, um, like example, with the solar rewards, it's already being withheld that way. There are other withholds um, that, ex that are in the statute. Um, it, it, it really isn't consistent, but... Um, that is a good question. Senator Marty. And Madam Chair, I guess I do recognize that some of what solar rewards were separate, but um, but the bottom line is you're saying there's no difference in the impact. Excel wanted it to go directly from them to solar and schools instead of appropriate RDA, but it's not going to have any impact in the amount or the continuation. It's just going to be the same. And that's, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that unless I hear otherwise. So. Senator Marty, how long have we been talking about solar in schools? It's been a long time, okay. long time. So thank you, Senator Sengem, for your letter, too, about those priorities that uh, we did fight hard uh, in the governor's office for. This is a but Madam Chair, program. Senator Marty, we do plan to get that money out the door and on, on, the, on the roofs of schools, uh, irrespective of where it's coming from. So uh, that, that's the goal, and that's what's going to happen. Super. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Arnold, for, for being with us today. Um, any further questions, comments, members? Audio on, video on, please. We're going to take a vote. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move Senate File 19 as amended to be recommended to pass and to be referred to general orders. Senator Kiffmeyer moves that Senate File 19 as amended be recommended to pass and placed on general orders. All those in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. All, the, all those opposed say nay. Motion prevails. Thank you very Thank much, you. Senator Senjum. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Senator Deems. Okay, one more bill today. Can't
figure out this mute, this uh, echo. <laughs> Sparkly. <laughs> Senator Thomasoni, welcome to the Finance Committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. It's nice to be back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, what we've been um, asking our, our members and the staff is to you've been before, of course, uh, this committee. So, just if you could just highlight some of the changes from um, the working group and the conference committee, and some of some of the special pieces of your your bill. You don't. We certainly don't need to go through line by line, but just what's important and what the compromise was. And then for the fiscal staff, if you could, again, uh, go to the general fund expenditure and start and work from there. Senator Thomas. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And first and foremost, thank you for the donuts. And, <laughs> um, and Madam Chair, there is an, an amendment that uh, corrects a cross-reference in the writers. I don't know if you want to deal with that first or if you want to wait until... Uh, let's go through your bill and then we can put right. that on. Thank you. Well, let me, let me just give you a, you know, a 30,000 foot look at it because this Senate file 18 is the uh, result of what the working group came up with. And it, it basically increases college affordability by providing stable funding for public institutions and makes significant investments in direct student aid. Um, uh, it provides a combined 89 million in operations and maintenance funding to our public higher ed institutions. It caps tuition at a maximum of three and a half percent increase each year. It increases grants awards for low and middle income families. It increases funding to various scholarship programs. It decreases textbook costs by re requiring four more colleges to implement zero cost textbook degrees. And Madam Chair, there was a press release just yesterday by uh, Min State stating that this particular program actually saved students $1.7 million uh, over the period that it's been in, in force. And it, it increases small campus aid by 5.4 million. And so Madam Chair, those are, those are some of the general highlights, but I think if we just let the, the staff go through the uh, spreadsheet, and then uh, Ms. White can go with the rest of the bill. And Madam Chair, I should also uh, thank uh, Tricia Elite and David Frazier and Laura Bach, my my staff, for the help that they gave me and 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 their contribution to the working group. It was invaluable. And um, and Joan White and Hannah Grunwald. And I should also say that um, working with Representative Bernardi and her staff was was very amenable also. So Madam Chair, with that, maybe I should turn it over to Hannah. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Thomasoni. Yes, let's turn to <clears throat> Ms. Grunewald. Madam Chair and members, hello again. I um, will walk through the uh, higher, higher education main changes from um, the bill when the committee last saw it. And I will share my screen um, one moment. So here I have the spreadsheet that um, has been provided to uh, committee members, and it's just as, as uh, Mr. Mum did um, with his spreadsheet, just showing the last um, few columns on the right of the larger spreadsheet so that we can view it together a little bit easier. And um, I'll start by saying that the uh, general fund target for the higher education budget was $100 million in the fiscal year 22-23 biennium um, and that 100 million is over base. And uh, again, in the tails, another 100 million over base uh, there as well. And as Senator Thomasoni pointed out um, some of the main changes here and some of the focus uh, of the bill uh, was on state grant increases and um, operation and maintenance increases as well. And I'll point those out as we work our way through the spreadsheet. Um, so for beginning on line 21, the state grant program um, had an increase there. Uh, both both bodies had uh, positions to increase state grant. So this amount is the negotiated amount um, that was agreed to. I'll move on a bit further down to some more Office of Higher Education change items. And um, some, some items here to point out that uh, weren't in the Senate bill previously. Uh, first online, 
um, let's see, line 79 grants to teaching candidates program was uh, agreed to be split into two different programs, um, one for grants to teachers in shortage areas and uh, and then one to grants in under for underrepresented teacher candidates um, shown on line 80. Um, so the reduction here on line 79 is just representing representing a, a small or, or, or 1.5 million decrease of the original appropriation leaving about uh, a 1 million, I believe, uh, appropriation per year for, for the uh, grants to teaching the candidates in shortage areas. And then another um, house provision that was agreed, agreed to be included in the bill is on line 86. There's an aspiring teacher of color scholarships, um, and this was agreed to have $3 million of one-time funding over the biennium. And some Senate provisions here that um, were included in the bill would be the college possible increase of um, 100,000 over the biennium and into the tails. That's on line 74. And then uh, line on line 81, the Senate also was able to keep their position on uh, Minnesota Independence Life College and Community for an increase of 500,000 over the um, biennium. I believe the language um, agreed to here was just the uh, base language that has been used in previous budget bills. And then finally, another Senate provision that was included was the Fostering Independence Higher Education Grants on line 84. Um, and this is funding of about 4 million over the biennium and 7.5 million in the tails. So those kind of highlight the main changes um, some from the House and, and some from the Senate that were kept in the bill. Um, so I'll just move on to um, the next section, which is Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. The Senate uh, position had an increase to central offices and shared services. And uh, this increase was, um, I believe it was uh, kept um, around the same amount uh, the first year, the first biennium about 2 million, the first by the fiscal year 22, 23 by EDM, and then about 2.7 million in the tails. I'll move on down to line 124. Um, both the House and Senate had provisions of increasing the operations and maintenance amount. Um, and this was a huge focus of the bill. Uh, for, for Minnesota State Colleges and University, o &M, and it is increased by 45 million um, in the over the biennium and that is an ongoing amount and the senate was able to keep provisions on supplemental aid to non-metro colleges um, about 5.4 million over the biennium and ongoing into the tails the senate also kept uh, a workforce development scholarship increase of 1 million over the biennium ongoing as well um, and, and then additionally, the Senate was able to keep the mental health awareness program and uh, supporting students' basic needs appropriations. Um, both were uh, originated in the Senate bill. Now move on to the University of Minnesota. Here again, there's operations and maintenance increase. Um, both bills, both the House and Senate had increases here. So this agreed amount um, of 38 million in the over the biennium and 36 million in the tails. And moving down to lines 169 and 170, um, the Senate's original bill decreased funding to the regenerative medicine disease, um, or excuse me, but just the regenerative medicine appropriation. Um, and the Senate agreed to fully fund this in, in uh, the compromise, um, and as well as including clarification on what the grants uh, grant funding can be used for. And the House provision had um, an in a one-time increase to the Natural Resources Research Institute in the system special for the U of 500,000 in the, uh, over the biennium. And I believe that captures um, kind of just a higher level highlights some of the uh, main changes and compromises within the bill. Um, I'll just point out, uh, Briefly here on line 193, there's a carry forward of 5.34 million, um, which was cancellations from fiscal year 21. And that brings the total to um, 3.5 billion over the biennium and um, 3.5 billion as well and over the tails. 
uh, representing the 100 million increase in uh, both bienniums. And also point out um, two provisions that um, Senator Tomasoni mentioned in his comments um, that appear in Article 1. There is a tuition uh, cap of uh, in, the tuition cannot increase more than 3.5% for the next two um, academic years and also uh, for Minnesota State colleges and universities. And also for Minnesota State, uh, there's a provision in Article 1 for um, the, the Board of Trustees to request guidance from the federal government to see if um, federal funds that were given to the universities directly would be eligible for um, online tuition uh, refunds for, for students who, who had to take online classes um, during the uh, pandemic that weren't online previously. Um, so the, the, those are uh, changes that aren't shown in the spreadsheet, but that show up in Article 1. Um, and that, that captures the changes there. So I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen and stand for any questions. Thank you, Ms. Gernwell. Are there any questions on the spreadsheet so far? No, I don't see any. And we also have um, Ms. White available too, if there's anything in the bill itself that you'd like to talk about. I do know that uh, Commissioner Olson from the Office of Education is available, but however, I, I, I don't know if uh, he'd like to speak at all. I think he's feeling too good today. But Mr. Olson, there you are. Maybe you're feeling better. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members. So for the record, Dennis Olson, Commissioner of the Minnesota Office of Higher Education. Um, and yes, Senator Rosen, thank you so much. Or Chair Rosen, uh, not feeling well at all, uh, but felt it was important to uh, at least be here, just share a couple of comments. Um, I will just, uh, just say that uh, I appreciate and, and thank Senator Tomasoni uh, and the staff of the, the Higher Education and Finance Committee for um, for the entire session for working closely with us um, to you know establish what I believe is, is a strong higher ed bill here. Um, this this one that was the result of the, the working group process truly represents a, a strong compromise for all. Um, you, Ms. Grunewald and Senator Tomasoni had noted um, some of the new uh, pieces, you know, that, that we're most happy with, primarily the, the new investments in the state grant program, um, new investments in college prep programs, um, certainly establishing priorities to increase uh, teachers of color and American Indian teachers, as well as uh, teachers in shortage areas in greater Minnesota. Uh, you know, we, we have the uh, Senate provision in there for a, establishing a new program for students that are in foster care or were involved uh, in foster care previously a new uh, financial aid program there. And of course, uh, both highlighted the strong investments in our, our public to join you here today. Uh, we, of course, will we'll stand for questions if there are any, but um, really appreciate the uh, Senator and the staff and, and the committee process and the work group process thus far. Thanks. And Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Olson, and really appreciate um, you showing up. I, I, uh, and it's very important. And uh, you do have a very good bill in front, in front of you. So uh, thank you so much for your collaboration. Senator Thomas Sodi. Um, Madam Chair, I did omit the commissioner and his staff for their contributions during the working group negotiations because they were extremely valuable also. And so I want to thank him and his staff for, the, for what they did during that period of time. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Thomas. Sorry. Any questions for the commissioner? I do know uh, Ms. White has something that she would like to contribute. Ms. White, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Actually, um, Ms. Grunewald went over a lot of the new provisions that are in the bill that were house only. And um, I can just stand for questions if you have any questions about the uh, Article 2 policy provisions. Thank you, Ms. White. Mm -hmm. Um, we, um, Senator Thomas Sony uh, on line 176, the primary care education from the healthcare access fund. At some point, we are going to have to address that 4.314 million coming out of the healthcare access fund. <laughs> um, with that, 
Senator Kiffmeyer, you have the A1 amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the A1 amendment to Senate file 18 and if staff could explain what it is. I believe it's just, thank you, Senator Kiffmeyer. I believe it's just mm -hmm. the um, a changing of, of a section number that was printed wrong from 43 to 42. Any questions on the A1 amendment? Okay, video on, audio on, please. Senator Kiffmeyer renews her motion on the A1 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Okay, any further comments, questions? Senator Tomasoni, it looks like you are you're on your way. And I won't say any more. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Tomasoni, you got exactly what you asked for, didn't you? <laughs> your target was uh, exactly what you asked for. So. Um, it's, it, it's a good bill. If I had known that, Madam Chair, I would have asked for more. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Senator Thomasoni. Uh, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know, is this the first time that he's got only exactly what he asked for? <laughs> yeah, well, we don't know about that. We'll have to no. take further into the language. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that for the future. Okay, uh, Madam Chair, I will move the um, Senate file 18 as amended be recommended to pass and be referred to general orders. On Senator Kaffermeyer's motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. The motion prevails. Thank you very thank, much, Senator thank, Thomas Sonny. Thank, thank Congratulations. you, Madam Chair, and thank you for giving me what I asked for. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, members, that was that's all we have for today. And um, we do hopefully we'll have a jobs bill for tomorrow. Um, perhaps we don't have to, what time is session tomorrow? Does anybody know? Is it 11, one? Is it one o'clock, Aaron? Okay, thank you. Let's not start too early. Can you just watch your, um, <laughs> we don't need to start at 8.30. So uh, can you stay fluid and we'll, we'll let you know what time we need to meet. We'll meet back here and uh, transportation is done too. Don't know where that's at in, at the revisors, but uh, we'll just keep you posted. Senator Marty. So Madam Chair, the hope or expectation would be jobs and transportation tomorrow and then nothing over the weekend. Nothing and obviously weekend. you don't know, nobody knows when the rest will be. Exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, there are, there's nothing over the weekend and I doubt if anything on Friday. But we'll stay tuned on that. But my preference would be to just do this, have several of them, and just roll. So if we could. Okay. With that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, members.